Andy Katz here for NCAA.com and March Madness with my top 12 winners of the summer. That's coming after the NBA draft early withdrawal deadline, the transfer portal, which was going up until late August, and of course, commitments, which was still happening within the month of August. All right, let's start at number 12. We're going to count from 12 to 1. St. John's, I love what the Red Storm are doing under Mike Anderson, Posh Alexander, Julian Champagny, they are back. Transfers to this team, Aaron Wheeler from Purdue, Steph Smith from Vermont, Montez Mathis from Rutgers, and St. John's has a pretty good schedule. They've got Kansas coming in, and they go to Indiana with the Gavit games. At number 11, those Kansas Jayhawks. First off, they get Remy Martin from Arizona State. He withdrew from the NBA draft. He goes to Kansas, gives them an experienced lead guard. They already have Mitch Lightfoot, David McCormack coming back up front. Jalen Wilson and Ochai Abaji also returning for the Kansas Jayhawks. Good schedule as usual for Kansas, playing Michigan State at MSG. They've got that game at St. John's, former rivals Missouri and Colorado, and they will play Kentucky in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. At number 10, Duke. Paolo Branchero could certainly have played anywhere in the country in the G League. Overtime elite, could have gone overseas. He decided to stick with that commitment to Duke. That's a big win for the Blue Devils. And in this summer, I know we can't talk specifically about the class of 2022, but John Shire, the coach in waiting, picked up major commitments, which will allow Duke to continue to get some of the top talent in the country. So that's a big win for Duke here this summer. As for their schedule and Coach K's last season, well, it's significant because they're going to play Kentucky at MSG, Gonzaga in Las Vegas. They've got the ACC Big Ten Challenge game at Ohio State. At number nine, Kentucky. The Wildcats really did a great job in the transfer market. This was earlier in the year, of course, with Oscar Sheway coming from West Virginia, Kellen Grady from Davidson, C.J. Frederick from Iowa, Xavier Wheeler from Georgia. So all key pieces that happened over the course of the offseason. And then Davion Mintz deciding to return to Kentucky is big for the Wildcats. And also just having a summer. Kentucky, such a young team consistently, needs summer basketball. They got it this past summer. So that's a win for Kentucky. They will play Duke at MSG. They've got Notre Dame, they've got Ohio State in Las Vegas, and true road games at Michigan and at Kansas. At number eight, Indiana. Love the Indiana Hoosiers here because unlike most of the teams around the country, they actually took a summer trip going down to the Bahamas, and Mike Woodson needed that with this young roster. They played well. I mean, I know it was just a couple of games, exhibition games. They still forced 39 turnovers in two games, averaged 71 points. Trace Jackson Davis, one of the best players in the country, played well. Miller Kopp, a transfer from Northwestern, he played well. And then good news for Tamar Bates, Grace Thompson, Xavier Johnson, Christian Landers, and Jordan Geronimo. So Indiana checks in at number eight. At number seven, Michigan. Hunter Dickinson returns after teasing everyone with the NBA draft, but he withdraws, so that's huge. And then Caleb Houston, he had a great FIBA U19 trip to Latvia for Team Canada, big time score. Devontae Jones, he transfers from Coastal Carolina. Big news for the Michigan Wolverines. And most importantly, Juwan Howard. There was interest from the NBA, no interest from Juwan Howard. He stays put, Michigan, on this list at number seven. At number six, Purdue. They had a great FIBA U19 tournament. Zach Eady, the big man for Team Canada, he double double machine. Jaden Ivey, one of the best players in that tournament, plays for Team USA. And Travion Williams returns for the Boilermakers. So they are loaded with talent. They're my pick to win the Big Ten. And I like the schedule. They're going to play Carolina and then either Tennessee or Villanova at the Mohegan Sun and the ACC Big Ten Challenge. They get Florida State. At number five, Gonzaga. Chet Holmgren, number one player in this class, ends up being the MVP in the FIBA U19 gold medal win for Team USA. So that's huge for the Zags. Already bringing back Drew Timmy. Andrew Nemhard. This is going to be one of the best teams in the country again. And the Zags, of course, have a great schedule. They're going to play Texas at home in Spokane. They got a week in Las Vegas where they're going to play UCLA and Duke. 
They're going to play Texas Tech and Phoenix and Alabama in Seattle. Now to the top four. Memphis checks in at number four. What a summer for the Memphis Tigers. Penny Hardaway maybe could have gone to the Orlando Magic. He stays put. Then he adds to his staff Larry Brown and Rasheed Wallace. How about that experience on that staff in Memphis? And then over the summer, picks up the reclassification of Jalen Duran. Big man, supposed to be in next season's class. He's coming this year. Phenomenal pickup for the Tigers. Then they get Amani Bates. So they're going to have Bates and Duran, this one-two connection. They've got experienced players coming back. This is a Memphis team, which still has not been in the NCAA tournament under Penny Hardaway, but potentially could make a Final Four run. I didn't put them higher because they still haven't done enough and they're hanging their hat on big-time freshmen. We've got to wait and see how they do. I know people would say, oh, they're the biggest winners of the summer, but I want to push the pause button just a little, and I put them at four. At three, Texas. Chris Beard comes to Austin from Texas Tech and just loads up on the transfer portal. First of all, Andrew Jones coming back is huge for the Longhorns. The latest pickup was Marcus Carr from Minnesota. He's going to be that lead guard, I think, ahead of Devin Askew from Kentucky. Utah's Timmy Allen has been phenomenal from what I've been told over the summer in Austin. We already knew they got Trey Mitchell from UMass, who I think is going to be a big-time talent in the Big 12, more so than he was in the A-10. Getting Creighton's Christian Bishop, obviously, is another big pickup for Texas. And their schedule. They're going to go to Seton Hall in the non-conference, but they open the season at Gonzaga in Spokane. At number two, Illinois. Kofi Coburn returns to the Illini, which is huge Illinois. No one picked that. That was a stunner. He either was going to stay in the NBA draft or transfer. He's coming back to Illinois. He'll be the one of the best, if not the best, big man in the country. He joins an experienced perimeter. Demonte Williams, Trent Frazier, and Andre Corbello, who will pick up for Iowa Sumo as one of the closers. But I think Trent Frazier could be a closer as well for the Illini. So I think Illinois has a great chance to finish in the top three in the Big Ten and make a deep run. Number one for me, the biggest winner in the summer, it's my number one team in the Power 36. It's UCLA. Basically, the whole team's back from last season's Final Four run, essentially. Johnny Juzang was that final piece coming back. He could enter the preseason as a first-team All-American potential player of the year. He joins Jaime Jaquez, Tiger Campbell, Cody Riley. They're picking up Peyton Watson, big-time newcomer. And then Miles Johnson comes over from Rutgers. He'll help Cody Riley out. And I love the schedule Mick Cronin put together. He's got Villanova coming to Pauly. He's going to play Gonzaga in Las Vegas. True road games at UNLV, at Marquette, and North Carolina also in Las Vegas. So those are my top 12 winners this summer in men's college basketball.